Hello, good evening, and uh, greetings to all. I'm coming to you from the Scarborough Family Worship Center, and my name is Eloise Walters. Uh, welcome to our leadership Bible study. We are very thankful for you joining us this evening, as uh, per usual. Uh, thank you for your uh, contribution to this Bible class. Uh, we see the feedback and we appreciate you for your um, cooperation and your fellowship with us. May the Lord bless you. And so before we, <clears throat> having said that, before we start this evening, I uh, would like to breathe a word of prayer. Heavenly Father and God, we thank you again. We praise your name because of who you are. We give you the glory and the honor, Lord. Thank you for this privilege that we have in joining together in this Bible study. We ask your blessing, Father, upon us so that those that will hear uh, Lord, we'll accept your words and we'll be willing as a people uh, to commit our lives to sharing the gospel one to the other. We praise your name this evening and we bless you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for this privilege as we honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. So we have been, um, in this class, we have been dealing with the subject of community and we're very thankful for, um, uh, as I said, the word of God that reminds us that we are a people in a community, that we are a body, and that um, we cannot function without each other, as the Lord designed it to be. So um, in the last lessons, we talk about what is God's design for a community, and um, uh, the importance, uh, a biblical view of the commu Christian community and its importance in the life of the believer. And um, tonight we're going to be delving a little bit in um, the subject of unity and um, diversity in the community of believers. Unity and diversity. And so um, uh, we have been encouraging uh, ourselves, as the scripture commands us, to, uh, to be able to build up each other, as we spoke a lot about that as the body of Christ. Um, we need to know how we function and where we function and the place that God has placed us in this community or the body, the church, uh, where we fit in and how what we ought to be doing. Each member um, is responsible uh, to help the community of believers uh, to, um, to function in one, in oneness. The scripture commands us to love one another, to greet one another, to uh, pray for one another, and whether it's globally or locally, we are uh, co um, committed, we should be committed rather, to be a part of seeing that the community of believers are engaged and we are helping in some way, small or great, uh, to booster unity in the uh, body of Christ. Division is not God's way, it is not, and we don't divide uh, our body, our bodies, the members of our body against itself, because every member, as we said, is important. So again, when we speak of community, we are speaking of the Christian community. And we see that example in Acts of the Apostles with the believers. We see it in the Old Testament, as well as the New uh, Testament, the early church and the Acts of the Apostles. And in this lesson, according to scriptures, again, we want to um, speak of the Christian community. Uh, and it is defined as a, uh, a community, uh, as a group of people living under God's rule. So was the Israelites. So was the early church. 
And so is the local church as well as the global church. A community of people living under God's rule who are learning to love God and love one another. And to um, the natural eyes, it is impossible, seem impossible. How is God uh, going to design the body of Christ all over the world, locally, uh, to become one? But that's God's way. And um, I believe that the Holy Spirit in the life of each believer uh, will, will empower us as true believers to live uh, and to do the work of Christ in uniting us together uh, as it was in the early church. Yes, it is a process. It is a process of learning and obeying the scriptures. And uh, as the scripture said, whatever was written aforetime, it was written for our learning that uh, true patience and comfort of the scriptures, we uh, might have hope. So we, uh, one of the scriptures that I'd like to share tonight is uh, Romans chapter 15 and verse 1 to uh, 7, I think. So I'd like to read that. It's an admonition from the Apostle Paul. And it says, We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification, for even Christ pleased not himself. But as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproach thee fell on me. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Now the God of patience and consolation grant you, and speaking of each one of us, to be like-minded one towards another according to Christ Jesus that he may be one with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 7, Wherefore receive ye one another as Christ also receive us to the glory of God. So the apostle is reminding us that just as Christ emptied himself for our sake on the cross and came and lived among us and died for our sins. Uh, we must be the example of doing uh, God's will. We are the people of God. We are all called by God to represent him in, in the world. And so, um, we are responsible as believers of the body of Christ to um, promote that unity, even in the midst of our diversity. We're not all oh, one people. And, and, and sometimes we look at it, the Apostle Paul says that we who are strong ought to bear the infirmities or the weaknesses of other believers in the body. And in the previous lesson, we spoke about the body of Christ and how God has designed the church, the body, to function, uh, though we are different in culture and in human differences and race and our temperament may be, the, be not the same. We are called, though, to celebrate each other um, differences. Uh, I believe that one of the plans uh, for the Lord's church on earth in every age is unity. Jesus prayed about that unity in St. John 17. And as believers, we need to promote unity in the body of Christ. Uh, I said in the last lesson that you're, we're not alone. You're, you and I are not the only ones in the body. We are, we are members, the scripture said, of one body. We belong to one body. As long as we are born again 
and we are washed in the blood of, of Christ. We are, uh, and we are joined together in the body. We are one and we need to celebrate each other's differences. Um, so the scripture said in Galatians 3 and verse 28, that um, neither Jew nor Greek, uh, neither slave nor free, male or female, for year one in Christ Jesus. So our differences does not define us. The fact that Christ has redeemed us, whether we are Jews or Gentiles, Uh, whether we're educated or uneducated, whether we're uh, black or white or, you know, rich or poor, our, our, um, our differences, our color uh, should not define us. We are, the scripture said we are one in the body. We are supposed to um, look out for each other, build up each other. This is, this is what the Lord requires of us. So we, we need to be reminded that uh, the blood of Christ has connected us. All those who belong to him uh, are hearers of his promises. And so we, we have to learn, it is a learning uh, how to accept our brothers and our sisters who may not look like us or speak the same language. And, and this might be on a global sense or on a uh, local sense. We may not see things in the same way, but as long as we are born again and we are washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus, we are and are joined to his family, then we are his children um uh, now we need to understand the scripture said that we should try the spirits and see if they're of god and so that's our responsibility as believers because not all uh, uh who said they are believers are really true believers but it, uh, we need to know how to dissect how to um try the spirits that are not of God and to know the difference. Um, in Ephesians chapter four, I'd like to draw another reference there. Um, the scripture reminds us that um, we should walk in unity and we should keep uh, unity in the body of Christ in the bond of peace Ephesians chapter 4 verse 1 um, and I'll read a few verses there it says I therefore the prison of the Lord beseech you that a walk worthy of the vocation we are with your call, with our loneliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another, forbearing one another, endeavoring to keep the unity uh, in the spirit, in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, even as you are called into one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. Isn't that beautiful? But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of Christ. And I'll stop there. There is a, an endeavoring, the scripture said, we should work hard at keeping peace in the body, keeping uh, the faith, seeing to it that our brothers and our sisters are um, working together in, with one uh, mind. So the scripture encourages us to walk in a walk, in our way of life, 
and in all the activities of our walk with the Lord uh, is encouraging uh, harmony or uh, unity in the body of Christ. Um, as members of the body of Christ, we can do our part in maintaining that unity. We are to do our best to work hard at preserving the unity of the faith, especially those of the body that are mature believers. Seek to preserve unity in the body. The scripture said that we are one in the spirit, one Lord, one baptism, uh, one Holy Spirit guiding us. And so we are to forbear one another. In other words, put up with one another's offenses. Be patient with each other's fault and doing our best to keep unity in, in the body. Uh, the Apostle Paul exhorts us in Romans 15, verse 6, and seven, and um, running along uh, very, uh, as we read there earlier on, that uh, we are to seek out the welfare of each other, those that are weak and those that are um, need our, our help in, in, in this body. As a matter of fact, we are encouraged to build up each other and not to destroy, neither on a global scale again or as a local church. We should not be among those who cause downfall or uh, discredit uh, any other saints in the body of Christ. But the apostle said we should be one mind and one mouth glorify the Lord as uh, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So in, go, in, in, in seeking out unity, uh, uh, the scripture is telling us that it glorifies God when we, when we are united together. When we are united together and there is a camaraderie among the members of the body of Christ, having the same mind and the same focus towards the things of the kingdom of God. You know, brethren, we need to remember that we are fighting for the same cause. Uh, the, the word of God tells us that we should be uh, like-minded, having the same focus. We don't have to uh, look like the other, but we need to have a, 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 a mindset that we are fighting for the same cause. And not only that, but when we're in unity, it pleases God, it pleases the Father, and it glorifies Him. Where there is discord and division in the body, it grieves the Spirit of God, and it does grieve the heart of God. So um, we have to consider as believers, as members of the body, that um, we are not always going to see things eye to eye. Jesus said in St. John 13, verse 34 and verse 35, uh, that a new commandment he gives us, that we love one another as he loves us, and that also we should love one another, and by this all will know that we are his disciples. What is he saying? Jesus is saying that love for one another will cause the world to take notice it will cause the world to look at us and say, uh, these people have something that is different. When the world hears of disciples of Christ destroying other members of the faith, are destroying what we are doing is destroying what Christ himself has built. Jesus said that he built his church and the gates of hell would not prevail against it. And it diminishes our testimony of love for God as well as one another. 
um, we look in the world today and we see discord and division, sedition and dissension and schism uh, everywhere. It rules the day. It is not of God. It is not of God. It, 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 it is a, a work of the flesh when we are not able to, to love one another and get along in, in, in the sense that we are one in Christ. We are believers that have been bought with a price and yet cannot get along. So in the world today, we see it in government. We see it in the workplace. We see it in families. And unfortunately, it creeps into the church. We're talking about this evening unity, even in spite of diversity. We are not always going to be looking alike. And I repeat that so many times. We, we have to respect the fact that we are not of the same color or the same race or, you know, wearing the same uh, 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 clothing. But we are one in Christ. We were bought with a price, the blood of Christ, as uh, transform our lives and therefore we need to learn how to work together especially sometimes in a local congregation we, we, we refuse to allow each other to prosper and to thrive our giftedness are different we are all gifted in some area or the other and so there's no room for jealousy there's no room for dissension there's no room for um, uh, a schism or a discord. We need to allow each other to thrive and to prosper in where God has called us. It is our right to prosper where the Lord has called us to serve. And so um, as we uh, look around us, it is we don't have to look very far to see the, the discord within government, within churches, within uh, uh, the workplace, uh, and many, many, many areas. The enemies of God, we see uh, 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 the enemy working uh, to destroy our faith, to destroy our unity, to this, uh, the sow seed of, of discord. The scripture said, uh, when uh, men sleep, uh, uh, um, you know, the enemy sows tears. And so when we are asleep as leaders, especially in the body of Christ, when we are not contending for the faith, when we are not uh, 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 elevating and, and encouraging and building up one another, uh, the enemy has a tendency to plant discord and disunity and um, division among the people of God. So we need to uh, look for these things, be aware of what divides us. Some of the things that divides, uh, divides us is not worth um, the soul of, of, of your brother and your sister. You know, Jesus said a kingdom divided by itself cannot stand. And we see that very, very um, um, profoundly in, in our world today. People are in fighting within uh, their organization. And, you know, the enemy has a way of creeping upon us. And if we are not aware of these things, uh, we can destroy the sacredness of unity. Um, not only does unity discredit us, it discredit other, other people, other members' integrity other um, uh, members of the body of Christ locally or, or globally. It, it hinders the work of God uh, on earth. It hinders the flow of the Holy Spirit among us. And you know, in the scripture, Ephesians 6 and 10, it says we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. We don't fight against each other. Uh, but there are wicked spirits among us. The, 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 the spirit that is in the world, the Bible said, powers and principalities that hate the work of God and the kingdom of God and, and, and would want to, um, you know, uh, cause us 
uh, to, to destroy one another, even with our words and um, uh, uh, our critical spirit. Um, so we need to encourage each other the importance of um, unity, even if we don't speak the same language. Uh, in the body of Christ, it's when a local church has um, division, it is easily seen. It is easily felt. And um, when we look at Acts of the Apostles and the, the disciples, uh, the Bible says as they walk up to Antioch, it could be seen that they are, they are in fellowship with one another. When we are not in fellowship, we, we, um, we see things in a different light. We, we, we see um, criticism and all kind of distraction in our, in our congregations. But the scripture reminds us that there are powers among in the world that would destroy uh, the, 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 the faith and the, and the uh, you know, authentic uh, relationship that we should have in the body of Christ. We, we want to continue to, to seek out um, uh, um, our, our brothers and our sisters, wherever they are, even in this time of pandemic. And many are, you know, behind closed doors. Many are discouraged. Many are, um, you know, uh, lonely, many, many needs uh, our prayers. We need to pray for a global a revival. Pray that God would, you know, send a mighty revival across the globe to his people so that when this is all over, we'll see God's hand in the life of, of, of his church. Romans 14 and verse 19 is another scripture that I'd like to read for you. And it says, uh, let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace. This is such a great encouragement for the body of Christ. Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and the things wherewith one may edify one another. So we are encouraged to study how to edify or to build up one another. You know, when we are quarreling and contentious, we cannot edify <laughs> anybody, okay? But the Bible said uh, each of us must seek out ways how to edify, how to build up. And if we are building up one another. We don't have time for contention and, and petty things. Um, you know, uh, uh, the scripture is warning us in verse 20 and 21 that we're not to destroy the work of God. I wonder if there's any uh, member of the body of Christ that is guilty of destroying what God has done in the life of his people. Uh, let us follow after peace, the things that make peace, and the things wherewith one may edify one another. For, um, you know, God has done a work in each of us heart. Every saint, every believer is called to be God's workmanship. And we need to put down prejudice. We need to put down our own uh, feeling of how things are to work, whether um, we are in the same body or not. And again, we may not agree on every subject, but we need each other. Whatever is, um, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report. The scripture said if there's any praise or any glory, we are to think on the things that make for peace. Don't destroy the work that God has done 
in the lives of others. It's better that we deny ourselves, the scripture is saying, than cause a stumbling block in the way of other believers. We're closing. So the scripture is reminding us of our duty and our responsibility to, um, to pray for each other. And we may not, uh, again, agree on every subject, but God is on in unity. He knows that we can live in, in, in oneness. We can live in, in peace. We can live because God has done a work in our hearts. We can do the same. We can share the same um, um, spirit, the same camaraderie, the same love that God has produced in our hearts. Um, we can do the same uh, for each other. Colossians 3 and verse 11 is the last scripture that I'm going to use um, today. And then we are going to pray for each other. Verse um, 11 says, Praise the Lord. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision or non uncircumcision, Barbarian, Scythian, bond, or free, but Christ is all in all. Christ is all and in all. Put on, therefore, as the elect, we are the elect of God, holy and beloved bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, and meekness, long-suffering, forbearing, be patient with one another, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. This is the word of God. There was a time in our lives um, uh, when we had grudge against each other. But Christ's blood has washed us and has cleansed us. The scripture is saying that if any man have a quarrel, and sometimes it happens that we misunderstand each other. We're talking about unity uh, uh, and diversity in the body of Christ. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do he. And above all these things, put on charity, which is love, which is the bond of perfectness. Verse 15, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts to the which you are called in one body and be thankful let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, in hymns, spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Amen. This is the word of the Lord that is encouraging us tonight about unity in the body. You know, Jesus said, <clears throat> if the world hate him, the world would hate us. And you know, if the world hate us, uh, in the early church when uh, there was persecution, these believers stood together. They encouraged one another. You know, the time is going to come. And right now over the world, there are many that are being persecuted for the gospel's sake. Uh, the scripture reminds us that we are to be a part of their suffering. And we need to pray for them and, and, and think about them. But don't think that, you know, they are aloof and they are out there on their own. We are a, a body. So let us, um, the Bible tells us that 
We need to forbear with one another and forgive one another. And locally, if we have a quarrel or a dispute among each other, we need to learn how to forgive. We need to put on uh, charity and let God's peace rule our hearts. You know, the spirit that is working in the world is a spirit of division and destruction. And the body of Christ is not immune among leaders, among members. It's not immune from the enemy bringing us down with uh, division and contention and schism and uh, all these works of the flesh. So in closing, we need to be diligent of anything that would undo the work of God's grace in our hearts or in the hearts of our brothers and our sisters. We need to seek to build each other. All right? And again, we cannot build up each other if we are quarreling and having a critical spirit and contention and jealousy. We must do everything endeavoring to keep the unity in the body of Christ, in the bond of peace among the community of believers in spite of our differences, in spite that we don't always see eye to eye. If anybody has a quarrel against each other, whether you're a leader or a member of who you are, we are one members of one body. God has joined us together and we need to respect each other and love each other and care for each other and build up each other. And we can't do that if we are contentious and in fighting for position or whatever that might be. This is very practical for us as members of the body of Christ. We need to know that it's one body, one Holy Spirit, one Lord, and one baptism. And unfortunately, you're not going to get to heaven before I do. We are going to be living together in the community of believers as we live for the Lord here on earth. When he comes again, we are all going to be together. So the Lord bless you tonight. Thank you so much for your patience and your um, listening. I want to thank you. Thank you for your prayers. Continue to pray for us as we continue to pray for you. We love you. And we're seeking God on your behalf. God is hearing our prayers and he's delivering us. Just be patient. Continue to love each other. Connect with each other. And stay in the place where God has placed you. So let me say a quick prayer before we go. Lord, we thank you again for this lesson tonight. Thank you for unity. And the subject that we have been dealing with for uh, this time, unity in spite of our diversity in the community of believers. Lord, I pray that that spirit of oneness, one mind, uh, one heart, Lord, you're encouraging us tonight that we were bought with your precious blood and you are the Lord of our lives. One Lord, one baptism, one Holy Spirit. And so I pray that the Holy Spirit would unite our hearts locally and globally, Lord, for your coming soon. And you're coming for a people that understand uh, your purpose for the body of Christ. You're not coming back uh, to pick up uh, scattered believers all over the, uh, the globe. But you're expecting us, Lord, to be a people who are minding the things of God. You said we should be like-minded, uh, focusing on kingdom principles and what we do in the next few hours that we ha have here to do the work of the Lord. We praise you tonight, Lord. Holy Spirit, we pray that you'll uh, connect us together in one. Speak to our hearts, we pray. Speak to our leaders, oh God, those that lead men. We are to be the examples of being uh, one and light-mindedness uh, light in the body of Christ. Thank you, Lord, for hearing us. Thank you for bringing us 
uh, together tonight and we glorify your name in all that we do. We thank you in Jesus name. Amen. Again, I want to thank you for being with us. Thank my tech savvy uh, assistant. I do appreciate uh, the, the help that I get to do these programs. And I do thank uh, Sister Jules for helping us here. God bless you. Again, Church of God of Prophecy, we are at 6th Donalda Crescent uh, in Scarborough. And we want to invite you uh, to join us on uh, our services, Scarborough Family Worship Center. And uh, we are presenting our services every Sunday morning, our Bible studies on Wednesday, and our um, leadership Bible studies two times a month. May the Lord bless you. Continue to pray for us as we pray for you. And we thank you tonight. God bless you. God bless you. We love you. Thank you very much.